So we close the cave, Al Kahf, with verse 57 through 110, right? The Muhammad Ali translation. And who is more unjust than he was reminded of the messages of his Lord, and then he turns away from them and and borders and forgets what his hands sent before. Surely we have placed veils over their hearts, lest they understand it, and a deafness in their ears. And if thou call them to guidance, they will even then never follow the right course. And thy Lord is forgiving, full of mercy. Were he to punish them for what they earn, he would certainly hasten the chastisement for them, but for them is an appointed time from which they will find no refuge. And these towns we destroyed them when they did wrong. And we have appointed a time for their destruction. And when Moses said to his servant, I will not cease until I reach the junction of the two rivers, otherwise I will go on for years. So when they reached the junction of the two, and they forgot their fish, and it took its way into the river being free. But when they had gone further, he said to his servant, Bring to us our morning meal. Certainly we have found fatigue in this our journey. He said, Sawest thou when we took refuge on the rock? I forgot the fish, and none but the devil made me forget to speak of it. And it took its way into the river. What a wonder! He said, This is what we sought for. So they returned, retracing their footsteps, and they found one of our servants whom we had granted mercy from us, and whom we had taught knowledge from ourselves. Moses said to him, May I follow thee, that thou mayest teach of the good thou hast been taught. He said, Thou canst not have patience with me, and how canst thou have patience in that whereof thou hast a comprehensive knowledge? He said, If law please, thou wilt find me patient, nor shall I disobey thee in aught. He said, If thou wouldst follow me, question me not about aught, until I sp myself speak to thee about it. So they set out until when they embarked on the, in a boat, he made a hole in it, said, Hast thou made a hole in it to drown its occupants? Thou hast surely done a grievous thing. He said, Did I not say that thou couldst not have patience with me? He said, Blame me not for what I forgot, and be not hard upon me for what I did. So they went on until, when they met a boy, and they slew him. He said, Hast thou slain an innocent person, not guilty of slaying another? Thou hast indeed done a horrible thing. He said, Did I not say to thee that thou couldst not have patience with me? He said, If I ask thee about anything after this, Keep no company with me, and thou wilt then indeed have found an excuse in my case. So they went on until when they came to his people, and the, when they came to the people of a town, and they asked its people for food, but they refused to entertain them as guests. Then they found in it a wall, which was on the point of falling, so he put it into a right state. Moses said, If thou hadst wished, thou couldst have taken a recompense for it. He said, This is the parting between me and thee. Now I will inform thee of the significance of that which of that with which thou couldst not have patience. As for the boat, it belonged to poor people working on the river, and I intended to damage it. For there was behind them a king who seized every boat by force. And as for the boy, his parents were believers, and we feared lest he should involve them in wrongdoing and disbelief. So we intended that their lord might give them in his place one better in purity and nearer in mercy. And as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the city, and there was beneath it a treasure belonging to them, and their father had been a righteous man. So 
thy Lord. So thy Lord intended that they should attain their maturity and take out their treasure, a mercy from thy Lord, and I did not do it of my own accord. And this is the significance of that with which thou couldst not have patience. And that last lesson is something that you find in your typical uh, sun card of the tarot. But um, let's not have issues uh, with, the, with the tarot, like Sue's saying and stuff like that. That's not what I'm saying. Um, our mere graven images, that's not what I'm promoting here. Um, so this is the second of the questions. What was the case of the companions of the cave? What was the uh, case of Moses and his companion? And what was the case of the warning? You know, the Eve of the Two Horns. Um, Karash, the Messiah, um, as the Bible mentions, um, was a figure who united men in Persia. But uh, anyways, um, that is after this. But let's not go too far with this story that we just encountered. That Moses was told, here's someone you can learn from. By revelation, or, or inspiration, he, he was told this. And then he went and learned, as God commanded. It's not that, oh, well, the sheikh has lessons that you don't understand, so you do anything... We have religion to temper to temper us. Um, so since we're not the prophets, these sorts of exceptions of, oh, well, learn from that person. Um, and they ask thee about the Qarnain. And they ask thee about the two-horned one. Say, I will recite to you an account of him. Truly we established him in the land and granted him means of access to everything. So he followed a course until when he reached the setting place of the sun and found it going down into a black sea and found by the people, we said, O oh, the, oh, the two-horned one, either punish or do them a benefit. And... See, it doesn't say the sun sets in the sea. It says that at the sunset, they saw it. You know, this is what they saw. Um, so let's not be confused that the sun sets in a muddy sea. Or that it... <coughs> or that there's literally a land of the rising sun. But as far as his kingdom, yeah, setting over by Turkey rising, you know, over by Asia, over in clearly what would be considered Asia. Even by the old definition of having Afghanistan West be considered as Europe. He said, as for him who is unjust, we shall chastise him, and then he will be returned to his Lord, and he will chastise him with an exemplary chastisement. As for him who believes and does good, for him is a good reward, and we shall speak to him an easy word of our command. Then he followed a course, until when he reached the rising sun, he found it rising on a people to whom we had given no shelter from it. So, you know, it's the, it's the rising sun, they see it. It's not that the sun rises out of here and sets into here. That's not, that's not what Islam actually teaches. Yeah, Maghrib Ashams is how they would refer to the setting 
for the Sun and the Empire. And the same thing with uh, Utale a Shams. The rising of the sun in comparison to where the empire is. And so it was, we had full knowledge of what he had, then he followed a course, until when he reached between the two mountains, he found on that side of them a people who could hardly understand a word. And they said, Oh, the one of the two horns, Gog and Magog, do mischief in the land. May we then pay thee tribute on condition that thou raise a barrier between us and them, the Magyar. Yeah. Mongolians, um, there were these people, the steppes of Asia, that would ride down, and there was a significant block, or there was a significant block until the 1100s, I think it was, um, that they couldn't ride through, and the, and the Persians built iron gates, um, he said, that wherein my lord has established me is better, so if only you help me with strength, I will make a fortified barrier between you and them. Bring me blocks of iron. At length, when he had filled up the spaces between the two mountain signs, he said, Lo! Till when he had made it fire, he said, Bring me molten brass to pour over it. So they were not able to scale it, nor could they make a hole in it. He said, This is a mercy from my lord, but when the promise of my lord comes to pass, he will crumble it, and the promise of my lord is ever true. And on that day we shall let some of them surge against others, and the trumpet will be blown. Then we shall gather them all together, and we shall bring forth hell exposed to view on that day before the disbelievers whose eyes were under a cover from my reminder and they could not bear to hear do those who disbelieve think that they can take my servants to be friends besides me surely we have prepared hell as an entertainment for the disbelievers You know, our friendships and our relationships should be for the sake of God. Say, shall we inform you who are the greatest losers in respect of deeds, those whose effort goes astray in this world's life, and they think that they are making good manufactures? Those are they who disbelieve in the messages of their Lord and the meeting and meeting with him, so their works are vain, nor shall we set up a balance for them on the day of resurrection, and that is their reward, hell, because they disbelieved and held my messages and my messengers in mockery. As for those who believe and do good deeds, for them are gardens of paradise and entertainment to abide therein, and they will not desire removal therefrom. Say if the sea were ink for the words of my lord, the sea would surely be exhausted before the words of my lord were exhausted. Although we brought the like of it to add, say I am only a mortal like you, it is revealed to me that your God is one God, so whoever hopes to meet his Lord, he should do good deeds and join no one in the service of his Lord. And so, Suratu Mariam is, God willing, the next passage, but... It's great to put these things into practice. Suratul Kaf, every Friday. Well, sunset Thursday to sunset Friday. Um, if not that, the first ten verses. If not that, the last ten verses. And the last ten verses. If not that, either the first or the last ten verses as a means, but of course, these things are as a practice of trust in God, because if you are using the formulas which God has revealed, which God has inspired, are even representative things, 
this is representative of one's trust in God. These are not um, mere words of power, as the uh, armchair anthropologist will say, is that these are not some spells where we're worshiping the words instead of the God who revealed them. Um, well, there's much more that could be said. The analogy of the Piscean Age as the appearance of Judaism and Christianity. You find that in the initial story. And there are many more parallels to draw, but I'm keeping this short.